You know, we live in a space now to where there's so much dialogue out there on so many platforms that it comes down to have you as a leader, have you as a firm, your mission, have you taken decisive and definitive action? Hey everybody, uh, welcome to our third episode of CertaCast. Really excited to kick off the new year with a friend of mine, Senior Vice President Brandon Thomas from Global Sustainable Markets. Brandon, awesome to see you, man. How you doing? I'm great, brother. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. Yeah, I mean, just excited to talk to you. So, you know, Brandon and I have previously worked together. We're, we're two people that have, you know, through the pandemic, we were in positions where we were doing a lot of crisis management. Um, we were looking at supply chain, how that was being affected, right? Um, and how a crisis um, could continue to affect the supply chain going forward. And it's interesting, as we were talking on the side, um, it's led us both to positions that we're in now, uh, right? And Brandon, that involves you going uh, over to a new company in GSM, right? And why don't you just talk to me a little bit about why sustainability is so important to you? Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I think it's, it's sustainability is key to my heart, but I, I am under the awareness and understanding that it's, it's almost a human right at this point in time. And what I mean by that is I've been all over the world. I've been in third world countries. I've been in first world countries. Um, and I can say confidently that as a leader, it's not only my responsibility, but it's our responsibility in terms of humanity to ensure that we take um, the right responsibility and courses of action from how we live and how we buy goods and to have longevity for generations to come. And so for, for me, it's, it's, you know, you can't save the world. That's kind of cliche, but you could do your part. Couldn't agree with you more, right? And I think, you know, you talk about leadership. One of the things I've always respected about you, um, you know, you're a veteran, right? Um, and you, you've served. And I think that's part of, just part of, but part of how you've seen the world, right? And you've seen different communities. How has your times serving affected you? You know, how does it make you think about um, as we go forward, you know, how do you think that's impacted the way that you approach these things? I think it's had a significant influence and impact on my life in terms of perspective um, and maturity. Um, but most importantly, it's seeing a world for what it was then at that point of time where you're, I'll give you an example. I'm just going to talk very briefly about this. An environment in Iraq where we are engulfed in combat operations uh, where you have, you know, one, one, one day you're worrying about obviously your life and your mission and your purpose. And when you take a step back from that, sometime later, a lot of time later, my, my service was, was small and minute and back in the day, but being able to understand when you look at the faces of children uh, in a war torn country, um, it's not just about that mission that you had at that moment. It's about the mission that you have to ensure that you have some level of positive impact um, for those generations to come. And I think when you look into the eyes of children and that volatile situation, um, for me, I felt a tremendous sense of responsibility. Um, and responsibility for me is more than just ideology. It's about action and action is actions important. And that's where we are now. So from my perspective, there was a, there was something I was looking at the other day and I don't know the exact statistic, but essentially the point of it was we, we spent a lot of time telling the individual consumer what they should do, but 70, 80% is really corporate based when we're talking about sustainability. Right. And so I think having the opportunity to, help guide corporations, right? Help guide um, these companies on buying better. But you and I have always had this thing is like, it doesn't have to be more expensive. It's buying better, right? 
good product, good cost, right? You can, you can potentially hit both things. Why wouldn't you? Right. And it's, it's funny for me in my new role. Uh, my wife and I were just talking about this the other day, uh, early in our relationship, my wife's a teacher and, you know, she's, she's a rock star she's, by the way. She's, she's pretty amazing what she's been able to do during this pandemic. But as a teacher and I was working in corporate America, I remember saying to her once like, Hey, I'll run the rat race. You go save the world. Right. And I've been so proud to be able to say to my kids lately, like, Hey, I figured out a way to do both. Right. Like, and, and, and maybe do it a little bit differently. Like, I don't feel like I'm just running a race anymore. I'm doing something. I'm part of something that's actually trying to make a real change. And I think as a leader, there's no easier way to lead, right? There's no easier way to try and inspire than when you believe it yourself, right? Like who wants to follow someone that doesn't believe what they're trying to take you towards? That's so I don't know. That's been something that's been huge to me. I know you're you're similarly wired, Brandon. How do you, how do you how do you think about that? Right? Like, do you think that your passion about it makes you an even better leader? And do you think that you know? You, I think you've talked about this already today, but I would say like you know the true self in that makes you a better leader. And it's not just ideology; it's about action. And how can you be in the modern age a great leader? Um, when you're not focused on action rather than just ideology. And what I mean by that is, as a leader, you know, data is the gold now, right? Data, 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 data points. Our people are our greatest asset and value. And it's about understanding that data is not going, it's going to empower, but it's not going to change and help make the world more sustainable. It's, it's about inspiring, it's about training, it's about mentoring, it's about developing. Um, it's about leading people down a road of responsibility. As you mentioned before, you don't have to buy different, buy smarter. And, and be able to put, you know, um, you know I, it's hard to make an impact in the world for be able to send a message across the globe a shot across the bow and get everybody's attention. But you can do that one day at a time with the ingredients that you have, with the team that you have, and that ripple effects potentially for generations. And I think and if you can achieve that, um, that's something invaluable. Yeah, you know, it's funny, you know, you, you keep mentioning about action and I didn't, I didn't think, you know, I had the frizz quote behind me, the Miss Frizzle, take chances, make mistakes, get messy. But I think it's, I think it's important, right? Like as you talk to people, like to understand that action means taking chances. You're not always going to get it on the first shot, right? But it's about pushing towards the right direction. And, and even like you said, like if we're getting 1% better each day, right? Like if you're, if you're improving, if you're moving towards that, if you're showing positive action. And I think one of the things we have to encourage our people to do and take chances that can mean mentally, right? Like that's ideas. That's, that's taking a chance to bring forward a new idea. Like what if we did it this way? What if we approached it this way? What if we thought about it different and understanding that those mistakes, right. are what you build off of. Yeah. You're, you're a hundred, you're a hundred percent right, Mark. And going back to Miss Frizzle, which I grew up on that, which I love. Thanks for sharing that quote. Um, for, for me, when you're, when you're looking we we have a changing of the guard sociologically globally in terms of leadership this new awakening of sustainability we've had generation after generation after generation after generation that did what they were supposed to do to be successful in a box now through creativity and innovation um, and passion in my opinion leaders like yourself um, you know we're we're changing the dynamic to have people think outside that box. And the old way of rudimentary, you know, this is the way that it has to be, this is the principles, these are the KPIs, blah, blah, blah. Now we're actually having conversations. How many, how many times, how many times have you been told this is the way, this is the only way? I mean, especially when I'm watching Mandalorian, but Definitely have heard this is the way we do things a bit too often, right? <laughs> you know, it's it's interesting changing 
the way that we approach things, right? Whether it's um, remote uh, locations, um, how we're operating and everything else. But, you know, in the current world, right, it's getting harder and harder to pretend. Thousand percent. So we were talking the other day. It's like people were turning on the news in Colorado and going like, why are they showing footage from the summer? Right. Like what's, Oh, this is in December. These fires are happening in December. Right. And then the movie that's out right now, don't look up. Right. Which is essentially a parody. Great film. Just saw it the other day. Right. And I think you get to a place where, well, not think, right. The data is telling you it's no longer a choice. You, you won't raise funding if you don't have ESG um, goals, right. Compliance based activities. You will not get the right employees if you don't have these, because the younger generation is frankly smarter and better than us, thank, thankfully, and is saying, I will not work for you if you don't have a plan on what you're going to do here. I will not work for you if you don't have social responsibility and, and a way, right? Um, and so, I mean, where I'm excited is there's, some, there's a topic that we've been fighting about for a long time, but now the money's behind. What's some advice you would give for maybe a startup company or even a more established company that's trying to take themselves into the, the new millennia, right? Like the take themselves into the future. What are some starting points, um, you know, from a sustainability practice, from what you're doing to, to make some changes? How, what would be some guidance that you would offer there? I think there's two pieces to that. There's, there's and, and mind you, any sustainability action, no matter how big, no matter how small, Create some ripple effects. I'm, I'm a profound believer that you plant a tree in your community, one tree, you've made a difference. You know what I mean? You've you've been able to recycle, or you've been able to put, you know, your your immediate apartment community, or your your small town, or your city, or even the state towards a sustainable way. You're making an impact that's going to ripple, and I think that. People need to understand that even the smallest, the most micro um, actions that lead towards a sustainable space, they matter. So I think from an individual level, from a community level, we shouldn't discredit small actions, as I mentioned before, that lead and can lead to larger ripple scales of impact. Now, for a startup, you have to ask yourself, in my opinion, this is something that I'm very proud of. The people that I work with are brilliant. We have a global vision and it's genuine. You know, how many times do you go on LinkedIn or do you go on Facebook or you go on any other platform? And it's, you know, we're, we're here to save and change the world. That's, that's good in ideology. But what are your actions? Is it part of your business model? Is it something definitive? And it goes back to what I believe is one of the most important concepts is, can you create that sustainable relationship with your customer? Can your customer look at your model, look at your goods, look at your products? I don't care if you're selling tea. I don't care if you're selling reusable milk cartons. Can your customer base get enthused with the ideology of what you're doing, and the action of what you're giving for that, you know, for that, for that customer to be able to take that product and say, not only am I supporting something that's sustainable, but I'm taking action, right? You don't have to buy, you don't have to buy better. Sometimes you just have to buy different and put yourself in that position where you create that organic relationship between your customer base, that they're part of your mission. They're part of your vision. And you're part of your action to actually make, you know, the world more, more consumably responsible. You know, you made a point in there that zero in on, which is like talks cheap, right? In fact, a lot of large corporations that came up with some bold promises in the middle of, you know, 2020 um, are in some hot water right now because people have come back and said like, Hey, so what did you actually do? You said you were going to do X, Y, and Z and we're not seeing it. And, you know, this was, um, you saw this recently with the events that happened after George Floyd, where people said like, hey, just not being racist isn't good enough anymore. You have to actively be not racist. I, I see the same thing happening in this space, right? Like just being good enough 
isn't good enough. You have to actively be driving towards being more sustainable, right? Like it's not just like, hey, I'm, I'm not the problem. It's got to be like, hey, I'm trying to be part of the solution. So whether you're talking about civil rights, whether you're talking about sustainability, whether you're talking about greater good of community, whether you're talking about a definitive responsibility as a corporation, action is the only way. Where you mentioned something before, the younger generation is smarter than us. Thank goodness. You're right. You know, we live in a space now to where there's so much dialogue out there on so many platforms that it comes down to have you as a leader, have you as a firm, your mission, have you taken decisive and definitive action? And, and, for, and for a lot of folks, it's going to put them on the back foot. It's going to put them on the heel. And that's fine because maybe it requires something a little bit jarring for folks to say, you know, we're not just talking about it. We're doing it because action is the only way that we're going to actually create, you know, long lasting change sustainably for the future. I, I love you and I agree with you, but I got to tell you, if you say action one more time, I'm going to have the editor put uh, action. Marshawn action. Lynch saying, I'm all about that action from the Super Bowl that I'm year. all about that action. That's... And, do the, and do the Skittles. And do the and Skittles. Pour Skittles. <laughs> it's true though, is it not, Mark? Like, uh, you know, it, it, tax write-off or whatever you want to, you, whatever your achievement might be. And let's be honest, you know, I'm not, I'm not, um, I'm not trying to shoot a cannonball across the bow, but it's it's um you and I in our careers have seen enough and have enough experience to understand that there are talking about making definitive change through action. And there are folks that are actually taking part and responsibility to do it. And for me, I'm I'm on that parallel beam, I'm I'm on the ladder. Yeah. And and you know, it's I love that you've taken it there because, you know, bluntly, as I'm as I'm starting this webcast and hopefully trying to build some different communities um, that we'll be talking to, uh, that's what I'm hoping to drive. Right. And I'm, I'm hoping to have conversations with agents of change. Right. Like, that's the whole point. Like, let's let's have the conversation here so other people can hear it. But then let's go act on that conversation, right? Let's go, let's go take it. So, you know, this year specifically, and, and I don't think you and I have gotten to talk about this recently, but I have intention we're going to roll out this educational program uh, with the service software that we're going to take into some communities. I'm really excited about rolling that out a little bit later this month. We're going to be trying to do uh, an internship program. We have intentions of some impact hiring. We're going to start some community forums on like LinkedIn and stuff with some about sustainability Diversity, equity, inclusion, you know how passionate I am and have always been about that, right? ESG as a whole, third-party risk, really trying to bring these communities together, man, because like at the end of the day, that's how you get action. Absolutely. And I think, you know, if we can get to a place where procurement leaders, it's the standard. This is how we do it. This, is, this isn't good business. This is the only acceptable business. If you're not doing business this way, then what are you doing, right? The way we've changed some other things. So that's, at the end of the day, that's the goal. That's that's why I've come here to try and empower people to make those types of decisions, right? Like simplify the process so that you have that data like you just spoke of earlier, right? The data enables you to do the action. And that's that's hopefully what we at CERTA will partner with people. I mean, it's what we're going to do. Hopefully the partnerships will grow and follow, um, you know, give people that data so they can be about that action, boss. I love that. And, I, and I've, I've talked to you about this before in, in private, and I'll, I'll talk about it publicly here. This is why your, your voice, your mission, what you're doing right now is so important. Because it's from a leadership standpoint, we've always talked about it. The historical leadership has said, this is the way. We're in a sociological evolution, revolution now, to where literally leaders like yourself, that data is a video cast. Absolutely. Bring questions, bring challenges, bring your new creative and innovative vision on how literally we can impact the world. I, I, I adore you for the words. I, you know, it means a lot to me. I think that the, the pandemic, Big. right, played so much into Huge. this, right? The great resignation that we're seeing right now, like success is now defined differently. 
people got to go home and spend that time with their kids. And a lot of them were like, I'm not giving this up. You know, I actually used to say, you and I have talked about this for a long time. As a leader, one of the things I would always look at my people, you know, when you have people that work a little too hard, right? And try and get them to get that balance is, is like, what are you doing it for? Right. And I remember I had one employee who was like telling me he was on his computer at his daughter's basketball game. And I was like, I've never been angrier at an employee before in my life. Right. I was like, Hey man, five years from now, you won't be working for me, but your daughter will remember you couldn't shut your laptop for the basketball game. Right. For real. Where does someone want to work? Like what is success to them? Right. I did like one of my short videos on this. Like some people, there's still some people that success is completely monetary. There always will be. And then, you know, for someone, for me as a father, it's a lot easier when I can look at my kids like, well, what does your company do? Oh, well, you know, this is what we're doing. We're trying to do stuff in, in environmental and social governance. Now, to be fair, at least to a very long conversation with a nine, seven and four year old. Uh, they have very nuanced questions about that space and how we're how we're managing it. Um, in my opinion, there's five pillars um, that are going to transcend everything you just talked about for the necessity for leadership to be able to bring great people on and for those companies, not just, not just from, you know, a sustainability standpoint and their impact globally, but how they can be successful for the generations to come. And I think, you know, those five start out with mission and purpose. People want to feel part of something or else they would go do business themselves. What's your mission? What's your purpose? And rather than looking at people like their data points, as leaders, we have to ask ourselves, how can I do my best to train, mentor, and develop? Not to a company standard, to a personal standard. How do I take Mark Goldberg, thoroughly outline our value for mission and purpose, and how can I train, mentor, and develop Mark Goldberg as an individual to be the best person that he can be. Because if you have those five pillars, in my opinion, you're going to take a lot of people with you. And that's the purpose of this. We're trying to bring as leadership, as many people to join the tribe, to more than the brand, join the tribe of, of what matters and what values. And, and you're huge on empathy. So am I. And it's, it's, you know, I'm, I, I love your kids and I love, I, I love your wife and all those, I mean, you, you have a beautiful family, but there's all kinds of families that are out there. And as leaders, we've got to be able to empathize with that and say, you know, no matter how granular, no matter how large scale, we've got to be able to have those five pillars on a daily basis and be able to clearly define how people can be successful, both for the mission and both for themselves. I mean, that's, that's awesome, man. I mean, that, those five pillars. Right. I mean, where, where, where are we if we're not there? Yeah, no, I, I, I think it's one of the reasons we've always, you know, gotten along so well because of our, our similar feelings, um, on that space. Right. And, and about leadership, Brandon, Thank you so much for taking time to chat with me today. It was awesome as always. I'm excited to follow your path at uh, this new journey. I know you're going to be doing great things and we'll, we will stay tuned. Man, really proud of you, proud of what you're doing and uh, best of luck to Serta and team. They're lucky to have you and really looking forward to all the things that come. If I can help in any way, just, just let me know. I'm a fan. It's awesome, man. Thanks, Brandon.